by the grace of Christ. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 11. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 11. Or afflicted one, storm-tossed and uncomforted, behold, we set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate, your gates of uh, carbuncles, and all your wall of precious stones. All your children shall be caught in the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression. For you shall not fear. And from terror. For it shall not come near you. And if anyone stirs up strife, it is not for me. Whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and the dedication from me declares the Lord Amen Jerusalem the city that God chose before the foundation of the world as it is known so that he may establish as the capital and center of the people of Israel and of his temple and his house that in that house in that city in that temple in that house every man may draw near to God, may communicate with God, and God to talk to him as well, like he may ask God, and God to respond to him, to worship and offer to God, and God to be pleased by that person. That, that is a special city of the Old Testament, that in that city reigned, the kings, I'm not referring to Saul, who drew away from God, and he stopped being the anointed a king of God because of his transgressions and violations, but starting with King David, a man by according to the heart of God, that God foreordained to reign to reign in his throne, the King of Kings, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but the prophetic word now addresses Jerusalem that this special chosen beloved city, he sees it as storm tossed and afflicted. And the prophetic word does not speak only about Jerusalem. but also speaks about the first apostolic church as the Lord confesses that the people of the New Testament and the people of the church of Christ that came to the heavenly Zion where there are myriads of angels and the church of the firstborn registered in heaven the Lord also speaks about the first apostolic church which is especially blessed with all the powers of God and the Holy Spirit that indeed that it was founded and it was declared the gospel in all the world 
and a new people was created the people of Israel the new Israel of God and a people has nothing to do with the world a people that is not born alone in flesh but is also born in the spirit, the spiritual people that all sins have been taken away <clears throat> the baptism and the water uh, as the people who have been baptized in the water they cast away the body of flesh and sin and they participate in the circumcision not made by hands that is evident before all the powers in heaven on earth and underworld and those people is a holy nation a chosen people a holy priesthood royal race that God chose to proclaim his virtues and excellencies of God and to be glorified before God and to be known before all the powers the heaven and the earth and the earth the manifold wisdom of God to the w salvation of humankind but that church, in passage of time, in this Jerusalem, the mother of all of us, the one who's been the daughter of Abraham, of the, but the, over the passage of many years, has drawn away from the will of God and then she started becoming storm-tossed and afflicted. <clears throat> and up to the day, to this day, we find that church to be storm-tossed and afflicted. And the prophetic word, though, finally addresses the final apostolic church where the power of God will be proven in it as as we return to its roots and we resemble the first apostolic church but this is a passage that the judgment of God will erupt initially in his own house so that therapy and cleanliness as the Lord Jesus Christ is going to take his winnowing fork and his threshing floor he's, he's going to separate the chaff from the wheat he's going to store in the storage rooms of heaven but this church though because of its attitude worldly attitude and because of his practices and because of his disobedience to the word of God even now is afflicted and storm tossed and lacking comforted and it's that church though all extends all the way to us personally as the word of God says that we are we have to be blamed for for many things for the Lord is desiring to create one church glorious perfect and that church any not unblemished and without stain and as the prophetic word confirms to us in that church all the blessing of God will fall upon it as 
the mount of the Lord in the latter days will be exalted above all the peaks of the world and all the nations will run into it that this church that God will establish without a blemish or stains how is the Lord going to do this he will wipe off the authority of the devil and Satan he will lift up the covering of lack of faith and infidelity and will bring blessing without a trace of sin and to that church God will receive it as it is written death will be swallowed up in victory this is the future of the church have your own future if you want it of our perfection so that all of us will reach the unity of perfection of our faith so that we were not babes but perfect according to the knowledge according to the faith and according to our walk because if we do and if we don't if we don't make it to that absolute perfection and nothing that is defiling is going to enter the kingdom of heaven this is obviously the work of the Lord of hosts who is going to work into the end but it's also our own knowledge through the Word of God and belongs to us to make that decision whether we want to be part of that or not now to that church that God is going to create create absolute perfection in order to receive it in that church God promises and great signs and miracles with one precondition and we're going to read all those things as we're going to read about them even though you are afflicted and lacking comfort and you are storm tossed again I will set your stones with red marble I will lay your foundations of the sapphires I will make your pinnacles of agate your gates of carbuncles and all your wall of precious stones <coughs> look here about the perfection is going to occur to all of us of all of them that any wind is not going to draw away as the Lord Jesus Christ he's going to thresh his floor he's going to remain his his fruit and remain in faith and sanctity so that the Lord may prepare us in order to receive us all your sons will be taught by the Lord of hosts there will be will be uh, will be peace without any limit and God gave me to understand that this is going to be our future for those who are going to remain till the end and this is the future of the church this is our own future if we remain to the end He will be established in peace of God, steadfast and immovable, solid, 
You're going to be immovable and steadfast. Away from any tyranny. And you're not going to be afraid because God will be with you. I'm going to be away from any dread. Because though God will be stand behind any terror and you, and he will be your defender. And of course, there will be crowds that will set and be against you. Looking at, uh, looking at that kind of family, that church. Looking at that, such a person and a brother. And being in an absolute sanctification. Can this happen? Yes, it's going to happen because God is going to do this. Men will be stirred up against you. But I will not be with them. And anybody who assembles against you, the, what's certain is the outcome is going to be one of being colla collapsed. I am making both, both, I'm fashioning both your life and the fruit of your life. And I also created the ravager to destroy. And my hands is also the good but and the benevolent fruit. And know this. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. You shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. And all these things will take place with one precondition. While the prophetic word of God describes that as we arise from a condition of uh, a circumstance of sadness and despair, we're going to make it to surround it to a status of perfect joy and blessing. But the qu and sh question is, to whom? This is the inheritance only to those who are the sermons of the Lord. This is all going to take place from beginning to the end. From today till the day that death will be swallowed up by the rapture of the church. From today to the end. For the church of Christ. For the, for the house of the living God, which is the body of Christ. And for every member of the body of Christ. And for every one of us. This is the truth. This is the plan of God. This is the word of God. And no one may avert this plan of God for the servants of the Lord, though. Those who are servants. Because the righteousness of the servants of the Lord will be sanctification Amen. will be the perfection of the servants of the Lord will be by me says the Lord says the Lord of hosts it is shocking brethren to understand how God works to every one of us to every one family everyone church of our nation and the worldwide church and this is an amazing work the start from agitation despair and affliction because of the course that people take the families do and the local churches and even the leaders and it will reach with all certainty to the perfection I repeat will become a perfect church without a blemish 
or a stain or anything of those things. A church that Christ would receive so that it will be fulfilled what is written. God, death will be swallowed up in victory. The devil and his authority will be this will be taken away, which didn't happen in the Garden of Eden, which God allowed to criticize some authority there, <clears throat> and it fell. And even though it was taking away his authority for some point in the apostolic church, yet Ananias and Sapphira were, were led astray by the authority of the devil. Yet the remaining church remained in sanctification. And as the first church started in sanctification, and it started its fire starting being put out. And in contrast, the last ch apostolic church will start slowly, slowly will rise up. And then the devil will be taken away. Offenses will be taken away. Uh, offenses only exist in order to manifest the approved ones. And because everybody will be approved, there are not going to be any sin offenses, no unrighteousness. Because the full repentance and covering of the blood of Christ on the believers and the, the power of the Holy Spirit, everybody will come forth, all the repentant ones, and will be a perfect church as a result, as the Word of God describes. And what is a critical point? It's not the perfection of the church. It's the perfection of yours and I. And your perfection and mine depends on the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. And let us go with, <coughs> let, us all, let us all of us go to let us read about about our perfection with the final outcome of sanctification let's go to the Romans we're going to see now who is going to become a servant of the Lord Romans chapter 6 verse 16 Romans chapter 6 verse 16 do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you're slaves of the one whom you obey. If you're servants of the Lord, don't you know you're servants of, of whom you obey? E or you're going to be servants to sin for sin or obedient to the Lord. But thanks to God, even though you were, there was a great change in your lives. <clears throat> and today we need to confirm. Obey with all your heart to obey with all your heart in all ways to the standard of teaching of the sound doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ the standard of teaching of being imitators of Apostle Paul imitators you obey with all your heart become imitators of the first apostolic church the second you surrendered the home who teaches you as you obeyed with all your heart with the standards of teaching of the sound doctrine and you surrendered wholeheartedly to him to the Lord Jesus Christ and the result being according to that way being set free from sin 
become slaves to this righteousness of God. There's no other way to set yourself free from sin so that I'm, there's no other way there's only one way to obey with all your heart to the standard of teaching of Christ and to surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ my Lord and my God and it continues this because of your weakness uh, as you allow your bodies to become slaves of sin and you walked in lawlessness now you need you need to present your bodies to the righteousness of God in order to live in sanctification <coughs> of body and soul. As you wholeheartedly surrender yourselves to the sound doctrine of Christ, now you need to present all the members of your bodies, body, soul, and spirit, all the members of your body, slaves to the righteousness of God, so that indeed the sanctification of God will be complete in your soul, body, and spirit. Because when you were slaves of sin, you were away and free from the righteousness of God. You couldn't serve the righteousness of God. You couldn't. Because because your members were slaves to sin. You can have both purposes being served in your personal or family life. And this is the work of God to separate the defiled from the common, from the honorable, the chaff from the wheat. What kind of fruit did you have back then? From the work that you were doing as you were slaves of sin? Who, what was your fruit that now you're ashamed of? What matters is not is your fruit, but the sign, the fruit of that tree, and the fruit of that tree was death. But now, as you were set free from sin, There's only one way to be free from sin. To obey. To, to obey wholeheartedly to the standard of the teaching of the sound doctrine. You're not going to live the way you want to. But only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is our salvation. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ saves us, saves the church. It's going to save our country. Only the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you were set free from sin, how? Because you obeyed with wholeheartedly the standard of teaching of the teaching that you received. You surrender your lives to the one who teaches you the standard of teaching that saves you. And now, as you were set free from sin, now you're able to set yourself slaves. If you're not free from sin, you cannot enslave your bodies to God. As you were set free from sin, not with the blood of Christ, this is just the beginning till the end. Without, without transgression, without having anything, without disasters, with, well, and entering a church that doesn't have any offenses, where the devil is absent, that 
that God sanctifies not only with the blood of the Lamb, but also the Word of God, God and the Holy Spirit, the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Been set free from sin because you obeyed to the standard of teaching and you surrendered yourselves. And only then you may become servants of God. With the result, your your fruit is to be the rapture of the church. This is the plan of God. This is what we're going to experience. And the question is, are we going, going to live on the right side or the left side? Are we going to be in the goats or in the sheep? God wants us to be sheep or of the sheep. And he's teaching us here the standard of teaching for internal life, the only way to live. There's no other way to obey in all ways wholeheartedly and to constantly be obedient wholeheartedly to the one perfect stand of teaching which is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and to surrender yourself you you and your family as well absolutely and to surrender ourselves as a church so there will be in our church no trace of disobedience lawlessness in our body neither in our soul neither in our spirit neither in have any trace of arrogance in our spirit God wants to and he's going to do this to you do you want it as well though do you want to participate in this? If you want to, though, take the standard of teaching of the gospel of Christ and obey it, and only then, and then f real full knowledge of the will of God, you obey absolutely the standard of teaching of God. The body, soul, and spirit, then you're free. Yeah. You're absolutely free from sin. Then and only then, you are the servant of God. And only then comes the inheritance of the servants of the Lord, which is the absolute perfection, sanctification, and finally the rapture of the church. Dear brethren, let us understand this by the grace of Christ. I had not understood this, but understood this. You're not going to participate in the rapture of the church unless Christ does not perfect you. He's going to, he's going to receive perfect. He sanctifies by grace, but he doesn't allow the rapture of the church by grace. But he wants to take people who he wants people who obey to the gospel of Christ without foolishness without without little crosses without other desires and they're going to make it to heaven neither you or I and with all our hearts submit the standard of teaching of the gospel of Christ and surrendered that's the one who teaches us the standard of the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you're free from sin. Then you're a servant of God. Then in the hands of the Lord. Because it is ordained for the servants of the Lord. Then the one who is lacking comfort, afflicted daughter of Jerusalem, God will bring from the agitation and despair to the absolute glory and the rapture of the church. Amen. <laughs>